Well, in my opening statement, the December surprise. Along the show, I try to bring you an honest opinion and a real viewpoint so that you can decide on your own based on the facts provided of a subject that we are discussing. And once again, I'm providing you with a different side to the story that you haven't heard in the mainstream media. So it doesn't mean you have to take everything we say at face value. So please do your research, but think about a point as well. Now, one of the things that has been repeated time and time after is uh, the importance of our politicians being honest with their people. I'm sure you agree how vital it is that our politicians be real with us. So Finance Minister Basil Rajpaksa just got real recently. Listening. ஜனதாவட்ட well, that was Finance Minister Basar Rajapaksa telling the nation that tough times are at hand, especially in 2022. The minister says that due to the depletion of foreign income in 2021, we will face a challenging situation with foreign reserves that allows us to pay for goods and services worldwide. Now, if you are a person who's the head of a household and you know that your income has gone down for a few months, you would take steps to ensure to cut down on unnecessary spending and luxury items that you splurged on when you had some money because that's the sensible thing to do. So when our country is facing an unprecedented time, mainly because of the pandemic and also because we've become a nation of importers, what do we do? Well. Let's go out there and protest as hard as we can to get more money for less work. Let's complain on social media about how much this country has gone down the drain because you can't buy that new BMW because the government is not allowing imports of vehicles. Let's go scream and shout and complain to the world that even our country's economy has gone so bad that we can't import milk. Sri Lanka has an excellent reputable milk industry that's celebrated all over the world for its high quality. But, but we can't bring powdered cow's milk from New Zealand and has, to, has the joy of pouring in water again here and then drinking it as if it is wholesome. We can't do that. So the economy has gone down to the gutter. When the going gets tough, the liberal media, which is pretty much 80% of all media institutions in Sri Lanka, will portray this country as a shithole country. So the only solution they say can save us will be Sajid Premadasa. I know, I just heard your laugh. For an example, when the president took an unprecedented step towards ensuring a healthy population by asking us to cut down on chemicals we pump into our food industry, what did media institution that has chemical fertilizer companies in their business group do? Well, they showcased how we cannot do it. From the get-go, that's unattainable feat, they said. Cannot be done. No one in the world has ever done it, they said. We have to continue to eat poison because in order to live, that's the only way, they said. Created such chaos in the country to go against a good deed. Showed tiny carrots and said, look, organic fertilizer creates tiny carrots. Oh no. There's a spike in food prices. Did everything in their power to ensure that you and I eat more poison. The poison their group imports to, con to this country to sell. And no sooner the ban was relaxed overnight, overnight, the size of the vegetable became bigger, prices came down, and the mafia was laughing out of their ass for a job well done, fooling the people of this great nation and gaining a buck or two on the way. 
It is also a bit funny to me as to how Sajid Premadasa and the rest of the jokers of the clown clan made statements after statements regarding the depleting foreign reserves of Sri Lanka as if they are not responsible for it at all. Each person in the good governance joke is responsible directly for the state of our country's foreign reserves are at right now. This is because the good governance debacle borrowed so much money and did not have any progress to account for it. The Port City Project, as you know, when the clowns came to power in 2015, one of the waves they rode was a cancellation of the Chinese-funded Port City. Everyone made it sound as if it was the worst thing that occurred in the nation's history, not knowing that by 2015 we will indeed witness the worst thing that this country has ever faced, which is the citizen presidency. Thinking that the Western overlords would come bearing gifts and financial support in the guise of big investment, and appreciation of for getting rid of President Mahindra Rajapaksa, they showed their might to China and shut down the Port City project. If by any chance the Port City project moved in as planned, we would have had the city up and running by 2018, and by now with at least 25% of its investor portfolio covered, meaning there would have been a steady income of foreign investor funding to this country at this pandemic time. And because of the erroneous, stupendous decisions by people of the clown clan, people like Rani Vikramasinghe, Sajid Premadasa, Iran Vikramath, and Dr. Harsha De Silva, the so-called self-proclaimed economic all-stars, and their idiotic decisions are why we are at this sorry state right now. And now they have the audacity to criticize the decisions taken by this government to rectify their erroneous policies and the consequences it has had on our nation's economy. Lots of things they say. We got to always ask the question, why are we here? Then the answer will pretty much be right in front of our face. All right, uh, next I want to discuss the Omicron variant and its impact, the facts, the figures, and whether there is something for us to fear. All that is coming up with Professor Nilika Malavige shortly, but before that, Dhani Dutanamasam joins me here at the studio uh, tonight with a look at the real story. Good evening, Dhani um, we, uh, We've been talking about Omicron here in Sri Lanka. Uh, thankfully, we only have one case, but then again, uh, officials are saying that it already could be in the society. So tonight, uh, uh, on your real story, what exactly is your focus? So if I was to limit the entire objective of the real story to a phrase, it would be something that we had used within this program as well, that is facts over fear. So that is something that has been resonating over time. And as you recognize within the initial part of the program, even the, the professor who identified, the scientist who identified this virus is saying, you know, the panic is not necessary. Uh, in that light, in the recently published book, The Great COVID Panic, one of the authors, Professor Gigi Foster, identifies an extensive array of diseases that countries face daily and was overlooked by the healthcare industry as they were pretty busy responding to the COVID crisis. Today, we look at the underreported aspects of the pandemic. The spread of COVID-19 pushed a burden on the health sector of Sri Lanka that was not witnessed by other types of similar diseases. Sri Lanka, as a pioneer in battling polio, has shown immense prowess in vaccination and fighting disease in the past. It is this form of experience in the health sector and strategic leadership by the current administration that led to Sri Lanka becoming one of the highest vaccinated nations, with over 13 million being totally vaccinated and over 1 million receiving the booster dose as well. Over 570,000 cases of COVID-19 were recorded in Sri Lanka, out of which over 545,000 have recovered from the disease. However, in this backdrop and the push for lockdowns, other diseases such as dengue, diabetes, CKDU and cardiovascular diseases have had to take a back seat. In assessing the progress of these diseases, the reason why an overreaction to COVID-19 is harmful becomes clearer. The Ministry of Health reports that for the year 2021 alone, Sri Lanka has seen over 17,800 dengue patients, nearly double the rate during the last year's monsoon period. World Health Organization data shows that dengue now infects 390 million a year across over 100 nations. The bacterial disease leptospirosis is recorded to have affected over 5,700 people this year in Sri Lanka. In extension, seasonal viral flus have also been witnessed around the country. Over 19,000 patients were admitted with STDs for the year 2020. 
From the year 2017 to 2020, an average of 3,700 patients live with AIDS in Sri Lanka. Diabetes mellitus, ischemic heart disease, and asthma were some of the leading non-communicable diseases in terms of fatality rates. The Medical Statistics Unit in the Ministry of Health shows that prior to COVID-19, in the year 2019 alone, hospitals in Sri Lanka had over 31.5 million visits. It is fair to say that Sri Lanka already was giving a huge priority to the health demand that existed within the country prior to COVID-19. The presence of the coronavirus and its eventual spread pushed healthcare systems worldwide to change its priorities. Questions have been asked as to how sustainable this method was. Fatal conditions such as cancer, which has had a stronghold on people worldwide, is one area of grave concern. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the spectrum of cancer care, including delaying diagnosis and treatment and halting clinical trials. In response, the healthcare systems are rapidly reorganizing cancer services to ensure that patients continue to receive essential care while minimizing exposure to the coronavirus infection. Studies have been done in the United Kingdom to assess how screening of diseases has had to take a step back when it comes to cancer. In 2020, the United States Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services have classified screening as a low-priority service and suggested healthcare organizations consider postponing screenings. PubMed Central identifies that the measures put in place to fight the COVID-19 pandemic have a strong impact on many programs to fight several other infections in Africa. The disruption of drug and equipment supply, the interruption of therapies, or the underdetection of new cases produce excess morbidity and mortality linked to many other diseases, including HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis. After India went into lockdown in March 2020, the number of new tuberculosis cases detected there each day dropped by an alarming 70% in one month. This was due to the high number of undiagnosed cases of TB within the country. The WHO states that over 500,000 may have died of TB in 2020. Meanwhile, before the coronavirus pandemic hit, global measles cases had soared to nearly 870,000 in 2019, with almost 210,000 deaths, mostly in young children. This was exacerbated when the WHO announced in 2020 March to suspend all other mass vaccination drives. Measles experts fear that this is the calm before the storm. The delayed campaigns have left a huge and growing pool of young children susceptible to measles. When the virus finds them as COVID-19 restrictions ease, there is a possibility of it spreading. This was witnessed during the Ebola crisis as well, when priority was lessened towards measles. Large outbreaks were witnessed across the African continent. These indirect impacts could ultimately turn out to be much greater than the direct impacts associated with the current COVID-19 pandemic. Many study groups have tried to create models pertaining to the impact of COVID-19 on other diseases of this magnitude. An urgent study in Sri Lanka is also long overdue. We know again the uh, omicron uh, threat is always there and the government has taken every possible steps to mitigate it by reducing or by to action to reduce the activities or bad effects of this omicron and for which uh, several actions have been taken and we would like to ask from the public we will have to make sure that we uh, we cannot see any omicron omicron infected persons to the naked eye so what we need to do is to ensure that general health guidelines are adhered to thereby prevent the infection of covid-19 in general here on get real we have been clear about the economic repercussions of the pandemic and the sudden and sudden lockdowns however the impact on the day to day health crisis was also quite immense my what the real story really said some light on is the things that were left behind the people that were left behind within this pandemic period uh it is quite uh, important and it, it it was a good thing that you actually shed some light on on those issues like uh, dengue and all which is which is still prevalent in the society and you need a lot of uh, uh, attention to that and a quick response in order to curb the the situation if not with covid we will be talking about dengue and all in the in, in the next year that is it on some as always thank you very much uh, that is a look at the real story let's take a short commercial break. Upon our return, renowned Sri Lankan scientist and the head of the Department of Immunology and Molecular Medicine at the University of Sri Lanka, Jawadanpura, Professor Neelika Malavige will be here to discuss the Omicron variant. This is Get Real. Yeah.